Apparently, murder hornets, swaths of locusts, and a pandemic are not enough for 2020. Now we're adding Asian gypsy moths to the list. It may not seem like it by the looks of them, but gypsy moths are deadly to vegetation. According to the Washington State Department of Agriculture, in 2017, European gypsy moth caterpillars defoliated around 33% of the entire state of Massachusetts. Well, experts are now saying Asian gypsy moths are even more destructive and somehow they've made their way to the U.S. Here's what we know. A recent proclamation issued by the governor of the state of Washington, Jay Inslee, warns about the detection of Hokkaido gypsy moths in areas in Snohomish County, Washington. This is the first detection of the species in the U.S., the Washington State Department of Agriculture said in a press release. The Asian gypsy moth is native to Russia, according to the National Invasive Species Information Center from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Asian gypsy moths measure 3.5 inches long, or about 9 centimeters long, and female moths can lay from 500 to 1,000 eggs, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. In a press release, the Washington Department of Agriculture said European gypsy moth caterpillars eat more than 500 types of trees, plants, and shrubs. However, Carla Salp, a spokeswoman for the department, told UPI that Asian gypsy moths pose a greater threat than European gypsy moths because they can consume more species of plants. If the species establishes itself in Washington, it would become a threat to forest ecosystems and would lead to quarantine restrictions and increased homeowner pesticide use, according to Washington's Agriculture Department. But fear not, help is on the way. Washington's Agriculture Department is planning on starting treatments to control the moth pest in Boulevard Bloods and Woodway, Washington. Low-flying airplanes will be applying BTK, a bacteria in a biological insecticide used to eradicate gypsy moths in affected areas. Oh, and in case you missed out on the whole murder hornet and locust infestation, here they are. Let's see, 2020 so far. Huge bushfires down under where at least 1 billion animals died? Check. Global pandemic? Check. Large plague of locusts threatening food security in East Africa? Check. Hundreds of giant Asian killer hornets appear for the first time ever in the Northwest US ready to kill honeybees? Check. Wait, what? We wish we were kidding. Just as the world is trying its best to keep its cool in the midst of a pandemic, giant murdering hornets never before seen in American territory are coming out of hibernation. This is what we know. Last December, the Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed two reports of Asian giant hornets in Blaine, Washington. Reuters reports that two more unconfirmed sightings were reported in Custer, Washington. These killer hornets are now coming out of winter hibernation. Native to Southeast Asia, China, and Taiwan, Asian giant hornets can measure between 1.5 to 2 inches or 3.8 to 25 centimeters in length. Vespa mandarinia, also known as murder hornets, have stingers that deliver venom to their victims and mandibles capable of decapitating bees. According to the WSU Insider, the Asian giant hornet queen wakes from hibernation in April, finds nourishment, and then looks for a place to establish a colony that will later go out to bring back food. The bee population in the United States is most threatened by these hornets from late summer to early fall. While they hunt for food for their next queens, the hornets will decapitate honeybees and eat the bees' larvae and pupae. Well, you might be thinking, isn't this just nature? The circle of life, so to speak? Nope, not really. First off, we don't know how these hornets made it to the U.S., but they have never been found in the country before, so this new species is an invader and definitely a threat to beekeepers. Still not feeling this pertains to you? A threat to bees means a threat to human food production. We need bees in order for many key crops to be pollinated. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, more than a third of all American crop production requires insects to help pollinate. And the primary pollinator is, you guessed it, honey bee colonies. So what can you do? Well, if you live in the States, keep an eye out for these murderous buggers and call authorities if you're unlucky enough to spot one. But in your quest to take down the murder hornet invasion, please be aware of their painful toxin-ridden sting. Oh, and if you're allergic to bees, then definitely stay away because their sting could easily cause a severe anaphylactic shock and even, well, death.
Swaths of locusts usually come in waves in East African countries throughout the year, a cycle that, although challenging, farmers have learned to handle. But what happens when you get hit by both a massive plague of crop-devouring desert locusts and a world pandemic? According to a report by the Globe and Mail, East African countries could be facing a food crisis as waves of locusts have hit crops in the region since the end of 2019. A third wave of the insects is expected to hatch and spread in June and July. Just one locust can travel 150 kilometers in 24 hours and is capable of eating its own weight in crops each day. A small swarm of locusts, which could be around 40 to 80 million, can cover about a square kilometer and eat the same amount of food consumed by 35,000 humans in a day. On top of crops being impacted by the waves of locust plagues, Stephanie Hansen, a senior vice president of One Acre Fund, told the Center for Strategic and International Studies that farmers' incomes have also been affected due to restrictions put in place during the pandemic, which limit their capacity to sell food in local markets. The pandemic has also made it difficult for farmers to get rid of the locusts. Hansen noted that pilots in Kenya who fly pesticide aircraft are required to land at local airports before the national curfew is lifted. According to an assessment conducted by the Ethiopian government in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and NGOs working in the region, the spread of desert locusts has left around 1 million Ethiopian people in need of emergency food relief. What actions must be taken to help these people survive two crises at the same time? Well, among many other suggestions, the assessment states that people must be provided chemicals to deal with the locusts and other pests ravaging their crops and, of course, farmers need to be provided food supply for their livestock and agricultural input must be distributed. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.